What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to the channel and today we're here with another episode of our FC25 career mode with the Borough and we're back after the international break. We've got a home game against Bristol City to start with and then after that we have an away trip to Norwich, both, oh sorry, a home trip, uh, a home game <laughs> against Sheffield United. The away trip to Norwich is in the next episode, but uh, two tough home games to come. I dare say Sheffield United will be our first big top of the table challenge with a real contender uh, who's up there with us in the league at the minute. Now the league sort of settled down. We've had a good run, seven wins in a row, albeit the last few have been against teams we probably should be winning given where they are in the league. But yeah, we had a very good end to August, a fantastic max nine points September and October has continued in the same Manner. As for the team and what's going on in and around the team, we did have an email in regards to George Edmondson, who, of course, in real life we signed due to injuries to Dale Fry and Daryl Enahan, but obviously that's not the case in game. So Edmondson's not really gotten anywhere near our starting 11, and Ipswich are looking to recall him. And if I'm honest, if they do, they do. Um, I know Edmondson's playing a lot in real life, but yeah, if they want to call him or recall him, don't think it's going to be that much of an issue, if I'm honest. But nevertheless, not much else going on. Um, we've got the two games today. I don't think there's another youth tournament for another couple of weeks. So I think we still have a little bit of time before we have another youth tournament. That'll probably be in the next episode. So the two games today to whiz through, starting with a home game to Bristol City, who usually have a pretty good record at the Riverside. So the team's pretty straightforward. It's the sort of team you probably expect at this point with everyone fully fit back from the international break in one piece. Dieng and Gold back four is as always. Borges, Clark, Lenahan, Ailing. The midfield four is pretty much the same. We are going to keep McGree on the left. Conway and Latilath are up front. Still debating what to do on the left-hand side. Hamilton we've tried. Not 100% convinced by him as yet. Gilbert, okay. But I might put Bergzog on the bench both to keep him happy and potentially see how he works off the left like he does in real life. He could be someone we bring on late on in the game. But without any further ado, let's get stuck in. A warm welcome to you from the Riverside Stadium, Middlesbrough, one of England's industrial and football heartlands. I'm Guy Mowbray and Sue Smith is alongside me for commentary. And we have championship action on the way. It's Middlesbrough and they take on Bristol City. Yeah, cheers, Guy. It's great to be here. I think it's important that both teams are focused from the off, though, and they start quickly, but I'd love to see some goals. Hopefully, I've not just cursed it. Unsurprising who we've picked out as our player to watch here. What are we expecting to see from him today, Sue? Well, he's just a natural goal scorer, isn't he? But has a lot more to his game as well. He's a constant threat. And those defenders, they just can't switch off for a second or he'll punish them. Yeah, Bristol City are a team I'm always very wary of. They can pull a performance out of absolutely nowhere on the day. So, albeit I think they're 19th in the league currently. Can't be too complacent in this one. I've seen Bristol City come to the Riverside and pull out a result against us many times. Yeah, it looks like they've lined up in a 4-4-2 and they do look balanced in this system. You can defend deep, stay compact, bring the opposition forward, then hit them quickly on the counter-attack. This is the Bristol City team. Well, it looks like a 4-2-3-1 when they're in possession. May go to a 4-5-1 when defending. You think the double pivot in midfield, they're key to protect the back line, but they also need to get forward to support the press. There's going to be plenty of threat from the wide midfielders too, I'm sure. Here we go then, back at home where we've been pretty good most of the season. Borough at home, the Robins. Great run by, ooh, McGree nearly slotted in by Aidan Morris. It was the right ball. Very close to being perfectly executed. Here's Mayulu. He looks like quite the, the unit up front. Mimeti always a tricky tricky customer. Run straight into the rock that is Dara Lenahan. Nearly to Jones. And there again, 
Laff made a good run, although he's done well to win it back. Because that was the correct pass from Jones. Really good Hackney to Morris. Going from side to side, which is what we want to do. That's not a bad ball, that. From McGree, Laff just can't quite keep it in. That's one thing I've really liked about this tactical tweak. The fact that we can spread, we can go from right to left, two or three passes. Players are really wide and it stretches Bristol City's defence from one side to the other. Something, as I say, we have to start doing in real life. like to see Jones on his bike down the right-hand side. Here he is. Conway's free in the box. Not a good ball, that, though. Hackney, well, wins the second ball, but his touch is heavy. Borges there, though, preventing the counter-attack. I tell you what, McGree's made a good run. He slotted him in down the left. And McGree wins us a corner. It's been a competitive game so far. Neither side quite troubling the other as yet. In swinger from the right-hand side. It's near post. It's a good header. Well, it was dangerously across goal. Lenahan got rid of it. But Bristol City come again, although Morris doing what he does with a brilliant interception. Conway now, they're stretched here at Bristol City if we can get the ball forward quickly. Out to Jones. Back towards Riley McGree, who, well, could have dropped very nicely for him. Didn't really connect with the volley as well as he would have liked. Now then. Can we box them into this corner? Mehmeti. Oh, he's done well there. Earthy. Out to Pring. Jones is trying to challenge. Pring beats him. Oh, he's beat Luke Ealing as well. What a run this has been by the fullback. Until he hits the wall. That is Daryl Enahan. Now then, transition. This is where we can hurt them. Tommy Conway against his old club, of course. Just about gets a shot off, but there was pressure on him. Couldn't quite generate the power, unfortunately. Number 29 was on his back. Touch wasn't great from Conway there. Ball out by Dieng. Our fans trying to get us going here. It's been a very tight game. Here's Isaiah Jones. Out to Morris. Out to Ben. Uh, sorry, out to, out to Ben Dork. Out to Riley McGree. Lottie laugh. Couldn't quite get up. Borges into Hackney. We're moving the ball around nicely in the wide areas. We're not getting much centrally. Luke Ayling. That's a good cross. Hackney drops the shoulder. That's a good effort. Comfortable save for the goalkeeper. What a throw that is. We've committed with Borges here and we've we've lost out here. Good ball in field. Mayulu's onside here, but it's straight at Seni Dieng. What a chance for Bristol City. Quick move through the middle. Very well worked. Mulu was onside. But he should be doing better there straight at Seni Dieng. Tell you what, Lath's made a great run here. Lathy Lath! And that's a good save. Bristol City, well, Lathy Lath's running in behind. Causing the Bristol City back line to drop so deep. Bristol City get the second half underway. George Earthy instantly. Taking matters into his own hands. Getting Bristol City into our defensive third. Mimeti. That's a good overlapping rung from Pring. Good ball into the area. It's a tight angle. Senny has to parry it wide though. That's a quick start to the second half by Bristol City here. Mimeti. It was always going to be tough from that angle, but he's won his team a corner. This could be one of Bristol City's... Best avenues, although they'll have to probably have better corners than that. It's only as far out as Earthy, though. Oh, Mayulu with the turn. What a save from Senny, that is. How the hell did Mayulu... Well, how did they find him that close in front of goal? The shot was, again, 
Straight at Senny. That's two big chances for their number nine. And he's put them both straight at our goalkeeper. And he's in again here, Mayulu. And it's straight at Dieng again. Well, what a start to the second half for Bristol City. But their number nine, Mayulu, has missed two absolute stinkers. And that might be a wake-up call for us here. Conway's pass is blocked. It still works its way out to Jones, who dinks it into the middle. Conway can't quite connect. And the game has really opened up second half. Yeah, we've tried them. Crosses into the box. It's the way we play football, but they've defended pretty well. Good header down by Hackney. Morris. Out to Jones now. Oh, what a ball that is. Ooh, Conway nearly getting in between goalkeeper and ball there. Here's Max Bird. Freshly on for George Earthy. Mayulu. Oh, Mayulu. What a touch that is. And Luke Ealing has to step in there as the big man tried to skip through the Borough defence. There's certainly going to be chances here. But that's a great tackle from Luke Ealing. McGree spots Lat Ilath running through the middle here. He could do with Tommy Conway to his right. Instead, he finds Isaiah Jones, who dinks it in towards Conway. And there's the opening goal. A beautiful counter-attack. Once Ailing won the ball, and Tommy Conway scores against his former team. Beautiful play. Through the middle. Down the right. And then back across to Conway, who just gets ahead and squeezes it in. To that. Near post. And he has come back to haunt Bristol City. And in a very, very tight game, a deadly counter-attack from Borough. Puts us 1-0 up. And I think we've needed that. 1-0. Hackney carries it beautifully. McGree out to Conway. Morris has made a good run through the middle here. It's in. Morris! Oh, and it wasn't far away. Great run through the middle from Morris. That was not very far. He nearly bent it in the top corner. Deadly play through the middle once again from Borough. Whipped in. Oh, that's a good ball! And that's a huge chance missed by Atkinson. What a header. And he's got to score, you think? He's got to score. That's unbelievable. How has he missed the target? I mean, you can't say Bristol City have not had chances. Because they have. Back out to Morris. Here's Jones, who's gave them a torrid time down that right-hand side. Luke Ayling. Luke Ayling trying to work out the good good time to cross. Although Finazaz has room. Keep him here's a save. Azaz out to Borges. First time ball forward to Bergzog. Bergzog. Ooh, cut inside. No, well, I tell you what, it was a strong challenge if he'd gone down there. Just strong enough to shoulder him off the ball. Max Bird now. Now on ever for Bristol City in a six minutes of stoppage time. Matt Clark gets in the way of Miyulu. And plays a poor touch into Borges. Headed down by Conway. I tell you what, that's slotted beautifully through to Tommy Conway here who... Might make sure. And he does. Conway ensures that his former team will not be taking away anything from the Riverside. He has well and truly come back to Horn Bristol City. Tommy Conway with the brace. 
Shrugs off the defender. I don't know why their number 16 is not coming inside to try and close him down there. Dicky just didn't really engage. And that's beautifully slotted into the far post by Tommy Conway. Not our slickest performance. But once again, defense, defensively, well, I think we've been good, although... As I say, Bristol City have had opportunities in key moments. But we've took ours, and they haven't took theirs, and that's probably why we're top two and they're 19th. They're going to have one go at the end here with Max Bird. And that's poor. That sums them up, doesn't it? I mean, he's trying to bend it in the corner. Nothing for Senny to worry about. First long goal kick I've took on this game. But we may as well. Given the limited time left. There's Sykes. And there it is. Final whistle. Eight wins in a row. We just keep finding ways to win with the quality we have. And today it was Tommy Conway. Well, Leeds United have beat Sheffield United, so they'll stay top. Sheffield United, who we've got next, of course. But that's eight wins in a row. And I think we're officially at the 10-game stage now. So this is when I'll start <laughs> paying more notice to the league table. But as you can see, eight wins from 10 games. It's not bad. One draw, one defeat. We're not the best team, though. Leeds are unbeaten and ahead of us. And we're three points clear of Burnley. At the moment, who just look very solid defensively. But next up, the biggest test yet, I would say. We're at home once again, but it's fourth place, Sheffield United. And the return of Chris Wilder. So then, the team for the visit of Sheffield United. We've tried to keep as many of our best 11 fit by bringing them off in the last game. So, at the minute, the only change in the back five is Dale Fry coming in for... Daryl Enahan, who, yeah, 66% fitness, a little bit on the lesser side. So we're going to swap him out and keep Matt Clark in. He's a little bit more fit. He's just about recovered. Uh, midfield four is as is. Um, Jones, not 100%, but, yeah, he'll be absolutely fine. And I am going to keep Tommy Conway in. However, he might not last the full 90. We do have force as an option. And just obvious. I mean, there's some players in this team who we've just not seen yet because the team's so good. You know, Johnny House and Alex Gilbert, Tommy Smith, Bangura, who was very good in pre-season, you know, just hasn't quite gotten into the team as yet. So, yeah, this is what a fully fit Borough team could look like. But this will be the toughest game so far. They play with wingers. They've got Gus Harmer on one side, Callum O'Hare in behind Kiefer Moore, who will give our defenders a torrid time in the air. So... Yeah, I think this is the the time our unbeaten run's been at threat the most. So let's see how it gets on. This is the kind of occasion we all relish as football fans. Non-stop hype all week long. And now for the action. Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the Riverside Stadium. I'm Derek Ray and my commentary partner as always is Stuart Robson. I'm looking forward to bringing you the cut and thrust of the championship. It's Middlesbrough and they take on Sheffield United. Well the atmosphere is building nicely here and we've got two teams who like to play good football. Let's hope we get a good game here. It should be. Well, the numbers really speak for themselves and the home side boasting the best defensive record in the league. They're going to be very hard to break down, you just feel. Well, they press the ball at the right times and then drop off at the right times too, which is key to any good defensive structure. Their tactical understanding is absolutely brilliant, which is why they've conceded so few goals. Well, that was something at the start of the season. I would never have believed you if you'd have said we'd be joint best in the championship defensively. I would not have thought that would be the case with how we started. But this winning run has been built on, you know, barring the Preston game where we did put six past them. It's been built on being good defensively and making sure we take our chances at the other end. But 
this could be the best attacking team we've come up against. I'll be intrigued to see if the, the team looks the same as what it was in the tactical view. And it is. Hamer one side, Raksaki on the other, Callum O'Hare in behind, Kiefer Moore. They've got a good defence with Ahmed, o Ahmed Ho Amehodic. I can't say his name. And Jack Robinson. Uh, and a decent bench as well. So this could be either a cracker or it could be a game where both sides cancel each other out. But it's a midweek night game at the Riverside. The best type. And it's going to be a big clash between two sides going for automatic promotion. So here we are then. Borough versus the Blades. It's Morris. We were pressing. It's not a bad ball out to Isaiah Jones. McCallum does well to win it. Hackney with a second ball. Well, what a turn that is from Jones here. Jones, he's into the box. He may as well have a shot. Sheffield United letting him enter the box with ease there. And it just sort of opened up. I know the angle was tight. Middlesbrough were the winners when last they took to the pitch against Bristol City. Into the area here. Oh, it's Fry's in there, and it just didn't quite anticipate that it was going to drop on Dale Fry's lap there. If he had pretty much a tap in. Suriki, looking it from Morris. Raksaki now. O'Hare, not really seen much of him as yet. Raksaki, he looks an absolute nightmare down that right hand side. Look at him go. He's done, Morris. Oh, Borges, he's unlucky there. It was a good attempted challenge. Matt Clark picks it off of Kiefer Moore before he pulls the trigger. And Sheffield United's presses. Oh, and Matt Clark caught on the ball there by Callum O'Hare, who turns and spins, and the shot is parried. Straight to Kiefer Moore, who makes no mistake was going to play the diagonal with Matt Clark, but just took too long on the ball. Yeah, the De Jong is unlucky that he saves it straight into the path of Kiefer Mua, but that is a bit of a disaster at the back from us there. Took my eye off Clark, was looking for where Jones was to play the diagon before we knew it. O'Hare had nicked it. We just haven't quite got going yet because of Sheffield United. Now they've pressed us. Trying to stretch them and get in behind them. Well, yeah, it's just, just struggling to get through at the moment. I agree. That's too deep. Borges does well to get ahead on it. and Yeah, it was trickling towards goal. Dropped into the keeper's arms. Goalkeeper taking his time. Are we seeing some time wasting here by Sheffield United? Oh, Fry. He's won it up the pitch brilliantly. There's Dale Fry. Conway's done well to keep, the, keep possession. Oh, and he almost... Picks out Jones there. What a ball that would have been. Gus Harmer. Moore's in between. Borges, Ailing and Clark. Both of them together do enough. We'll take that. Ricochet. I laugh on the shoulder. Once again, Sheffield United defend well. Another little ricochet goes our way. Played out to Jones. Crosses in towards Conway. Armour's headed clearance is not a good one. Oh, and Hackney. That was the wrong pass. That was the chance to slip in Tommy Conway. Morris doing well there. Up against Raksaki. Who has been a nightmare. Fry out to Jones. That's a poor pass. Cut out by our blaster. Cooler Barley now. Oh, Morris, that's fantastic. 
That's fantastic. What a place to win the ball from Aidan Morris. And now Emmanuel Latilath is in on goal. And it's straight the goalkeeper. McGree. And it's just saved. Just before the line. Two big saves. And our first big chance. McGree. Oh, that's towards Matt Clark. Who is the man you'd want? Oh, Rakzaki. What a touch that is. To take it beyond Morris. He's actually got no one with him. Farmer's up there. McCallum now. Dale Fry. What an interception once again. Jones. Oh, once again. We've just been caught there a little bit. And there's Dale Fry again. And now Jones, oh, nearly picking out McCallum. We are within inches of some of these through balls coming off, but Sheffield United are just defending so well. Here's Harmer. And Ayling does well, but now it's a Sheffield United corner right before half-time. This would be a horrible time to concede again. Keep an eye on Kiefer Moore. Matt Clark, please. That's who they're going for. Matt Clark's the one, though. He does get something on the end of it. Oh, and Morris. Oh, and the referee blows the whistle just as we were on the counter-attack. That's frustrating. We will get chances in this game, but one defensive error. And Sheffield United lead at half-time. So then, so back in business here, and Borough of the side chasing the game. Not been in this situation very often of late. Chasing the game, trying to find a way through. Hayden Hackney. But I think we picked the pace up in that first half towards the end, and hopefully we'll get chances from it. McGree has room. Oh, and then just runs into Raksaki. It's just little moments like that. And now Raksaki down the right-hand side. Standing up Borges. Who's done well. But it's a corner to Sheffield United. Gus Harmer. Who's not been in the game up that much off the left. Compared to Raksaki who's been a real live wire. Who's come across to assist with the and corner, but... The oh, and it's headed in by Kiefer Mua! And I said at the end of the first half... He is such a threat from corners. And he's been picked out. He peels off Dale Fry. He's in between three Borough defenders. What a header that is, though. And it's the worst... Possible start to the second half. It's 2 0 to Sheffield United. Oh, McGree again. This is not going well at all. And now Raksaki skips past Matt Clark. Callum O'Hare. Kiefer Mu is in again. And it's three. We have crumbled at the start of this second half. McGree's lost it twice. And, I mean, we're all over the place here. Borges playing Moor on side. And now we have a real uphill climb to get back into this game. Changes are going to have to be made. Great play from Jones. And he's won that back as Sheffield United have, have sort of pulled men back here. And it's into four. Saved. Bergzog's there. Angles against him. Out to Aidan Morris. As we pause a threat there. It just, the angle just wasn't quite right for Bergzog. 
Ismaila Koulibaly. And that was a, that was the place to win the ball back there. Another live game in Better from Clark. Quickly trying to turn the ball around. And there was no one in position. Matt Clark there does well to cut that out. Koulibaly now. And it's another corner for Sheffield United. <laughs> Whoever's on Kiefer Moore, they need to... We need to make sure we don't suffer a fourth here because there's quite a high chance we will if he peels away. Once again, I think they might be having mercy on us here and playing it. No, they're not. They're playing it back to him again. It's Ahmed Hotic this time who's in. But it's straight at Seni Dieng. Probably the worst player they wanted in that situation. Borges. Got to switch it. Jones, is he onside? He's onside, he's held his run beautifully. Great ball in, a force! And he's got to do better. It's a great ball. Maybe a slight tad behind him. Maybe Salza did enough to put him off. Or hair. Here's Kiefer Moore again. Matt Clark, well, he's unlucky. Morris can't get onto him. And, oh, Dieng. Dealing gets rid of it just. Nearly snuck in for a fourth. Force. Great turn from Force. Great footwork from Force. Oh, and then Hackney. Can't play it. They've looked like the defensive, the solid defensive outfit that just can't be broken down to date. Kulabali. O'Hare saved. Once again, it's fallen into a dangerous area. And we've had to clear it. Well, that's lovely football in a tight area. It's opened up for Kiefer Moore. And that's a brilliant save from Seni Dieng. And we just about clear it. Moua could have had four. Borges. Cut out. That sums up our day, really. Raksaki. Kiefer Moua's in again. And again, it's a desperate scramble. Dieng is keeping the score respectable here. Mua has caused us so many problems. I'd actually invite them to play this short, to be honest. But I say that. I say that. Hackney's done well to win that. Morris thought, there's Hackney. Borges just about gets it out. Dale Fry, we've got room. We need to have to make that run and here it is. Dinked in towards Force. Heads it down. Bergzog saved. Jones. Latilaf. Does well to hold on to it. Hackney. He's broke the lines really well. It's dinked towards Latilaf. And he misses his kick. Oh dear. If he connects with that, it's a goal. And Morris has a knock as well, which just compounds things, really. Kiefer Moore. I mean, look at this. He's absolutely, I mean, shrugging off defenders left, right and centre. Draws a foul. Free kick. Oh, and Dieng. Well, didn't look like the toughest free kick in the world, but... Had to be saved. Now with our blaster... Morris has thrown himself into chat. I mean, where? What the hell? Where's the defence? What is going on there? Kiefer Moo has just stood on the penalty spot. Oh my word! This has been. I mean, what? Why is? Where is Mark Clark? And why are Deal Fry and Mark Clark literally 
opposite ends of the box with Kiefer Moore just stood on the penalty spot. I mean, well, the best defence in the league, my backside. Moore has four. Sheffield United have four. And this has been, well, it's been the worst day at the office since our time at, uh, as Middlesbrough manager. And the reaction from the fans, rightfully so. Shocking. Well, that is certainly the wake-up call. After eight straight wins, you expect, obviously, it to come to an end at some point, but wow, that was something. Finazaz isn't happy. Bergsort, well, I'm not really in the mood to talk to either of you, to be honest, but uh, I'll, t I'll say to Azaz, he's still in the squad, which is true, and he's settled for that with just the formation we play. He's just not really got a place in the team currently but that is the humbling that sometimes you need I mean league table wise no damage done still top two I mean our defensive records took a blow right there and Kiefer Moore has probably fired himself into the golden boot contention but that's what we have to be wary of when we're playing these really good teams. First half, it wasn't bad. First half, it was a competitive half where we made one mistake and we were punished. Second half, I know we were coming back and trying to chase the game, but... Yeah, not good enough at all. But only our second defeat, so we'll need to shake that off. And in the next episode, we'll be back for two more games in the league. We've got Norwich pretty quickly after this one. Before Coventry at home two difficult games on paper once again I think the commentary game certainly will be their seventh Norwich down I think in 19th 18th so yeah chance for us to get back to winning ways right there but that was ugly and I think we'll also have another youth tournament for any of you guys enjoying the youth tournaments in the comments I think we'll have one of them in the next episode as well but until the next one guys thank you very much for watching let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always subscribe for more do leave me a comment, like the video, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one.